Hi, this is Dr. Bhargava. In this short video, I'm going to be showing you some bone scans, some PSMA PET CTs, DEXA pitfalls, and talk about some gastric emptying studies. Here is our first patient. On the left, we have anterior and posterior whole body images from the bone scan. And on these images, we find that there is a focus of increased uptake in the right hip seen here on the anterior image and also on the posterior image. So frequently, trainees, when they see on the bone scan a focus of increased uptake, they think it's metastatic disease. But it's important to remember that focus of increased uptake is nonspecific and can be from metastatic disease. And also, it could be from various other causes. With metastatic disease, we want to see multiple foci of increased uptake scattered in the axial skeleton involving the skull, the spine, ribs, scapula, and the pelvis. Here we see a solitary focus on the right hip, and on the right we have this patient's CT scan images. On this axial image, we see that there are degenerative changes in the right hip, and on the coronal image, we see the same finding, that there is joint space narrowing. There is subchondral sclerosis, subchondral cystic changes towards the um, femur head and also in the acetabulum consistent with severe degenerative change seen on the bone scan as a focus of increased uptake. Here's our next patient. This patient has history of renal cell carcinoma and on their bone scan we see a focus of increased uptake in the sternum and that corresponds to fracture seen on the sagittal CT image in bone windows. Also, we find that there are several other foci of increased uptake symmetrically on the anterior view and these are at the junction of the rib and costal cartilage suggesting prior trauma. Here's our next patient. And we are looking at multiple images from their pelvic MR to evaluate rising uh, PSA. And on these images, we find that on this axial small field of view T2 weighted image, in the left peripheral zone of the prostate, there is a ill-defined focus of decreased signal. We see that same focus here and here on the coronal images. And we find that this focus shows restricted diffusion with high signal on DWI images and low signal on ADC images. This was biopsy proven to be prostate cancer and patient underwent a prostatectomy. This patient then presented with rising PSA and at that time a PSMA PET CT was performed. Here's the rotating image. This rotating image shows physiologic distribution of the tracer which includes the lacrimal glands, the salivary glands, liver, spleen and excretion from the kidneys into the bladder. There is a focus of abnormal uptake which is seen right here in the pelvis and corresponds to the sub-centimeter lymph node on the CT image consistent with recurrent or metastatic prostate cancer. Here's our next patient, another patient with prostate cancer. On their whole body bone scan, we don't see a pattern of osteoblastic bone metastasis. There are no multiple scattered foci of intense uptake to suggest osteoblastic bone metastasis, but there is a subtle focus of increased uptake in the midline in the lower thoracic spine. This patient also underwent a, a PSMA PET CT, and here's the rotating image on that study where we find that they have several foci of increased uptake suggesting metastatic prostate cancer. And these extend from the neck. Here we have left supraclavicular node, also known as Virchow's node. We have increased uptake in retroperitoneal lymphadenopathy extending from the abdomen to the pelvis. Here is that focus in the bone, and that focus is localized here on the fused um, PET CT image. And this is the same focus that was seen on the whole body bone scan on the previous slide. And this is the Virchow's node seen in the left supraclavicular space. This is our next patient with prostate cancer. Their PSA was very high. And uh, we performed a PSMA PET CT. And here we are seeing that there is diffuse increased uptake involving the entire skeleton. And this pattern is consistent with the super scan pattern on a PSMA PET CT. On the right, we have sagittal images from the CT scan of the abdomen and pelvis showing multifocal osteoblastic bone mets and also CT of the chest showing the same finding of multifocal osteoblastic 
bone meds. All right, switching gears now to talk about some DEXA scan pitfalls. Here is a scan on a patient where we find that compared to their prior study from 2009 in the region of L1 through L4, there has been a 12.8% decrease in the bone mineral density. And similarly, in the region of the right hip in the neck, we find that there is a 15.4% decrease in the bone mineral density when compared to the prior study. When we look closely at these images, we find that the L2 vertebral body appears small in terms of its vertical extent compared to the vertebra above that, the L1 and also L3. So this patient has a compression deformity involving L2 vertebral body. And so plain film correlation was recommended. And so these plain films show that this is the L2 vertebral body showing a wedge deformity. And so this patient already has an insufficiency fracture from their low bone mineral density. This is our next patient. And here we are looking at two different studies. The one on the left is the more recent study and the one on the right is from 2020. And so when we look at the vertebral bodies, we find that um, there is an artifact. They have a metallic stent in their infra abdominal, um, infrarenal abdominal aorta. And so that's what we see here as a density adjacent to the vertebral uh, or adjacent to the spine. And when we compare the labeling of the vertebral bodies to the prior study, we find that the labeling is incorrect. Um, on this prior study, this vertebral body is labeled as L1. And so it should have been this vertebral body on the current scan that should have been labeled as L1. And so uh, we want to be very careful when the comparisons are made that the same vertebral bodies are identified and labeled between the prior and the current studies. Here's our next patient and on their DEXA scan of the right femur, we find that their bone mineral density in the region of the neck has decreased by 21%. Now that's a big change uh, from 2020. When we look at the region, um, the femoral neck region on the current study and compare it to the prior study, we find that there is a discrepancy. And so the region of interest on the current study should be uh, similar to the region of interest that was used on the prior study. And so this comparison is not uh, reliable in this patient. Here's our next patient. And so here they have labeled the L4 vertebral body uh, correctly, but then there is hardware. We can see the posterior fixation hardware and they've tried to remove uh, that density. Um, but the ideal thing to do in this situation is to um, evaluate only L1 through L3 and report L1 through L3 and not include L4 vertebral body in the analysis. This is our next patient and here we know we can see that the t-score is very low and so they will fall in the osteoporosis uh, category but would you want to call osteoporosis in this patient, so when we look at their demographics, we find that they are 29, 23-year-old male Caucasian. And so we know that the WHO criteria that we use to give a T-score to the DEXA patients applies only to postmenopausal Caucasian women or men older than 50 years of age. So it does not apply to this young male. So we cannot use the T-score. They're z-score should be used in this situation and their z-score is very low and in this situation we want to report a number which is less than minus 2.0 as low for their age right so remember in other age group outside of postmenopausal caucasian women or um, outside of uh, more than 50 year old male patients we want to use a z-score instead of a t-score this is the image of their right femur, again showing that osteo they have osteoporosis per T-score, but we don't want to use that. And their Z-score is very low as well. And so we want to use that instead of the T-scores. All right, here's a gastric emptying study. We are looking at multiple anterior and posterior images at different time points. And this is where we see the gastric retention at several time points. And looking at these numbers, these are all abnormal. About 50% of the activity remains in the stomach at the end of four hours. So they have gastroparesis or severely delayed gastric emptying. We use these numbers 
uh, if the retention is more than 10% at four hours, it is considered abnormal. And similarly, 30% at three hours and 60% at two hours and 90% at one hour. This is another patient with gastroparesis. And here on the images, we find that the activity in the stomach has two parts. One is a more superiorly located round focus, and uh, another is a more inferiorly located linear focus, which looks more like the stomach. And the superior focus looks like the fundus, but it's away from the rest of the stomach. In terms of the numbers, they have severe uh, severely delayed gastric emptying or gastroparesis and when we look at their CT we find that the fundus of the stomach is in the chest they have this large hiatal hernia containing most of the proximal part of the stomach thank you for watching